Inscription, Christ born of Mary, discovered. When Jesus tells us that he is the light of the world, is this literal? And if so, what exactly does it mean? If you consider that Jesus is speaking from God and for God and as God, a separation from a dark period to the end of that period, when a light was no longer where it once was. Jesus announces he is the light that once shone in the sky. And of course, we mostly live in darkness and with darkness in our heart. We have a limited capacity to understand who we are or what we see in the world. But the beauty of our humanity is still evident. The story of Jesus is embedded within an event perceived in the minds of Earth observers. His existence is not questioned and his belief is widespread. Even 2,000 years after he was born, time still revolves around about his existence, crucified by men who feared him. According to a popular tradition, Paradise had been situated at Jerusalem as the cosmic center, as Adam's skull was buried beneath Golgotha in the wake of the deluge, at the very spot where the crucifix was erected afterwards. This earliest ancestor was conveniently baptized by the blood of the Redeemer. Therefore, the book of Adam and Eve has Noah commanding his son to lay the body of Adam in the midst of the earth. For in that self same place shall God work salvation for the whole world. The apologist Irenaeus expanded on the cosmic dimensions of the Nazarene's cross. For it is right that he being made visible should set upon all things visible the sharing of his cross, that he might show his operation of visible things through a visible form. For he it is who illuminates the height that is the heavens, and encompasses the deep which is beneath the earth, and stretches and spreads out the length from east to west, and steers across breadth of north and south, summoning all that are scattered in every quarter to the knowledge of the Father. Like other symbols of the universal column, the Christian cross was sometimes viewed as a bridge or ladder that quite literally enabled human souls to ascend to God, assimilated from much earlier Egyptian religion. It was stationed at the sacred center of the world as a 4th century chronicler states. This tree, wide as the heavens itself, has grown up into heaven from the earth. It is an immortal growth and towers twixt heaven and earth. It is the fulcrum of all things and the place where they are at rest. It is the foundation of the round world, the center of the cosmos. In it, all the diversities in our human nature are formed into a unity. It is held together by invisible nails of the spirit so that it may not break loose from the divine. It touches the highest summit of heaven and makes the earth firm beneath its foot, and it grasps the middle regions between them with its immeasurable arms. According to the Jerusalem Post, an Islamic inscription bearing the name of Jesus Christ has just been unearthed in Israel. Wait till you hear this. The 1,500 year old inscription rendered in ancient Greek reads, Christ born of Mary, as it was unearthed in northern Israel, the Antiquities Authority of Israel have announced. Archaeologists discovered the inscription engraved at the entrance of an impressive building from the Byzantine or earlier Islamic period featuring mosaic pavements decorated with a geometric design. History is written by the victors of war, and this revokes the falling civilization's right to be remembered. Religion, however, will remember important figures in martyrdom across the whole fledged region. Spreading sporadically thereafter as the offer of forgiveness and life after death overwhelmingly appeals to our very being. The state of our belief today is the result of these attractions. The finding was unveiled in a salvage excavation ahead of the construction of a road inside the village of Taiba, with one archaeologist working on the site exclaiming, We did not know what to expect ahead of the work, but we knew that this was an area where archaeological remains had been found in the past. When we came across the inscription, we knew we had a church, but the discovery of the Christ inscription has gotten us all positively excited. It states that Christ was born of Mary. The full inscription reads that whoever enters should pray for them and, according to religious experts, the inscription greets those who enter and blesses them. 
It is therefore clear that the building is a church and not a monastery. Churches greeted believers at their entrance, while monasteries tended not to do this. The words Christ born of Mary were widely used at the beginning of documents and other forms of text, serving as a blessing and a protection from evil. As a blessing, the inscription must have originally stood at the entrance of the church where people could see it. However, it was now found incorporated in the walls. Therefore, we know that the stone was reused as construction material. Likely the building collapsed and was rebuilt. This is the first evidence of the Byzantine church's existence in the village of Taiba and adds to other findings attesting to the activities of Christians who lived in the region. Taiba itself was a Christian village in the Byzantine period, 5th to 7th centuries, and later became the site of a crusader fortress, but the modern Arab village grew around it, with much of the ancient remains still visible. That is all for now, but we do hope you enjoyed the show today, and we leave you guys with a reading from the passage of Andrew, which reads, I know thy mystery, O cross, thou reachest unto heaven, that thou mayest point towards the Logos, who will come from above. Thou art stretched out to the right and left, so that thou mayest put the fearful forces of the enemy to flight and gather together the whole world. Thou art made fast in the depths of the earth, so that thou mayest unite with heaven all that which is upon the earth and all that is beneath it. O cross, thou art planted in the earth, but bearest fruit in heaven. O name of the cross, that containest within thyself the whole world, hail to thee, O cross, that thou holdest the cosmos together up to the utmost boundaries thereof.